I've counted 17 AI tools. I'm really, really excited to show you. So for the first one, let's look at one of my favorites, which is Magic Edit. So here, for example, I had this photo for this event I was doing on the 3rd of April, as you can see. But the venue was like, uh, actually, let's not include the people and definitely not these people here. So what I did was I could tell Canva to replace these people with empty chairs, as you can see, these three people with some trees and these three people with some microphones. Let me duplicate this one. So I'm going to select the photo. I'm going to edit photo. Then you get these three things. We're going to go through all of them. Magic edit though is the free one. The other ones are pro. So I have step one, two, three. So brush over the image. So I'm going to select these three people. It doesn't have to be exact, but approximate is good enough. And I'm going to replace them with some short trees and then generate. So there you go. It's taking a little bit of time, but it gives me four options. Um, I probably prefer this one. I mean, if you really look at it, you can see that it's kind of put in, but you have to really zoom in and there's so much happening in this other picture. So I'll press done and then I can magic edit again and I can also go through the same thing. Empty chairs. There you go. It's giving me a bunch of different options. There's facing away. This is kind of okay. And then I can just keep going. And I love this. I actually use it a lot more which than text to image because this is what you want to do when you have an existing photo and you want to change that into something else. So I'm going to press done and then it just saves it like that. And with any of these, um, if you ever want to reset it, you can click back there and reset it and it goes back to how it was. My name is David Nam and I have tons of videos on Excel, Canva, Power BI, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff, particularly this awesome stuff on Canva that I've just started doing material on. So next one is Magic Erase. It's going from a picture like this and then removing them and replacing them with nothing. Now, if you really look closely, you can see that there are probably some things that have been done, but it's super easy to do. So let's look at how it works. So here, for example, I can click on it and edit the photo and Magic Erase. This is a photo I took. Let's say I don't want this person here. I can just kind of draw over them. Same as Magic Edit, but it's just going to try and replace it with the background. Wow, look at that. That's pretty good. Let's get rid of this bollard as well. There you go, pretty good, huh? All right, so let's try with this one. It works super well if you want to get out some text, for example, so magic erase here. And I'm just going to draw over the text in the middle. There you go, so it hasn't worked 100%, but I can get that again. There you go, now it works pretty well. You can adjust your brush size. And if you go a little bit over, usually it's smart enough to know it. So if I wanna get out of it, I can click that. All right, so let's look at the next one, which is text to image. And this is an app. You can install an app by clicking on apps and then looking for text to image in there if you don't see it automatically. So here, this is uh, kind of like kind of like Mid Journey and Dali are doing quite famously. So I can just write something. I can say alien invasion. There you go. I didn't like that. It said some results are okay. Others are not. So it filters out versus other things. Here is what it gave me, which is actually pretty decent. Or if you want more results, you can create over. So if I go to start over, I can say I want something landscape and I want something that is photo like. There you go. So it's given me some options. So here is some that I did. Um, these people are pretty bad, but these people are a lot better. They're not perfect. Elephants, you know, there are some things that you might notice a little bit out of whack. Here, for some reason, they put the shark on the land and not in the ocean. But oh well, it is definitely changing and improving over time. So another one is Edit Photo and BG Remover. I'm actually going to copy and paste that, Control C, Control V, and click on this. It does say this resets the changes made by Magic Eraser. Actually, you can't use more than one of these at the same time. So I need to replace that, get this head back, and then do that one. Um, sometimes if I do want to do more than one, then I'll export it as an image and then re-import it back. It has happened to me. Here you go. So it's removed the sky, which is nice and it does a really good job around the trees, but, um, I think it could do more. So actually what you can do is this other website that I really like called remove.bg. So here I have an image and I'm going to copy it and paste it here. Control V. You could also import it in other ways, but this is fastest. And I find that at the offset, it does a slightly better job, but what I really like as well is you can go to edit and then erase, restore, and then you can erase or restore certain parts of it. So it will even try and use AI to figure out where the trees start and end. But if you go to design, you have layouts and it can give you these 
cool layouts where it can uh, show you different things that you can do with it. Now, this isn't uh, classified as AI, but it is a smart learning thing that can put things alongside in interesting ways here. It took out the title, for example, um, here for black background. So yeah, it know, it's aware of what the images and text is and it's able to help you with that. Here they're not numbered, for example. Um, you have styles as well. Styles I wouldn't say is AI though. It just takes different options and stuff and converts that for your whole presentation. Uh, then going back to templates, you actually have magic design. So I could say here, I want um, history of Gibraltar. That's where I'm from. There you go. It does take a bit of time, but it's generated all of this. And this is pretty interesting because these are some things that happen. I know this being someone from Gibraltar, 1713. Yeah, it's actually done all this research online. Uh, and it's done it in kind of a certain style, but I can change the style if I want something more like this, the Rock of Gibraltar history. By the way, the first image is actually not Gibraltar. I'm 99% sure. But all the other ones definitely seem to be... Um, so that's super, super interesting. And I really like that. You can you can change your style or your templates as well. So if you choose this style, then you, uh, with this color code, you can change um, how things are appearing in each slide. And then you can press create my presentation. So if you do have something with multiple elements on a slide, this is again, talking about presentations. Then what you can do is you can go to uh, animate and then you get these combinations. Again, this is something that is not classified as AI, but I think it kind of is aware of different objects, so it's intelligent things. So it does something for each one at the same time at similar times, which is pretty good. Um, to do this in PowerPoint would take you lots and lots of things. You do have your manual things, but uh, it does take you a lot more time to do that, whereas the combinations I find really, really quite handy and quite nice. Uh, some of these are only available if you do have the pro version. I'll go through what is and what isn't later on in this video. So another one is when you do have Canva Docs, which is their equivalent of Word, you can convert, convert to presentation. Kind of like last time, it'll give you these ones. It's not as good at looking up images and stuff. So I do think that this will improve over time. But in the same way, you have stuff that you can do with your brand or just different template styles but I'm not that impressed with this. And then create my presentation, we'll convert it into a presentation. So I did generate this using AI and let's talk about how I did that. So here we are in the docs one and you are able to use magic right. So magic right allows you to use five or more words to describe what you want. So I could say, for example, um, what are the best pointers here we go. So it says, what are the best pointers for getting a job at the design company? Build a strong portfolio, networking professionals. This is a lot like ChatGPT. I'm definitely nowhere near as sophisticated as ChatGPT, don't get me wrong, but Magic Write is pretty good there. So this is what it generated. And I can click on that and you get the Canva Assistant over here and you have these Magic Write things. So I can expand text like that. Rainbows are beautiful and natural phenomenon, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Yeah, so it's done that pretty well. You can also go the other way. Now this works one text box at a time, so I can select that and I can summarize. There you go. Rainbows are a natural phenomenon created by the refraction dispersion. This is more text than I had initially, but it's done it through AI. You can also rewrite it if you don't like that. There you go. Science behind rainbows. And now I can try and summarize again. There you go. So it is getting a little bit shorter and giving me different things. Or you can also edit with Magic Write. And here you can edit it, but it will still use Magic Write to try and change the thing that you said. So I can say, I first saw a rainbow press enter to confirm press enter. And then it says, it's it sounds like you had quite an, an adventure with your dog Toto. So it is kind of uh, changing how that is evolving. But if you want to just edit it, you could just edit it like this and then it will lock it. It won't do a magic edit. So another one is translate. And I can translate this entire document or a single design or whatever it is. So if you don't have those, you go to apps and you just search for translate and then you can add it like this. And then automatically detect, fine, let's change that to Khmer, which is the language in Cambodia where I currently am and apply to all pages or just current page. I'll just do current page, translate. And it is doing that. So 
it does a pretty okay job at translating and uses some languages which like Kamai, which you wouldn't really find in Word or um, Excel or things like that. It does say you have 499 uses left and then it refreshes. So you do have a maximum limit for all of these. If I add text to image and I try a, it will tell me this, you've re reached your image quota for the day. So uh, that happens not just with images, but also happens with kind of like the, the magic edit and the other things as well. Make sure that you are aware of that, but then it will just reset. If you have the free version, then your translate limits are a bit different, a bit lower, but unless you're using this that often, it shouldn't matter too much. So this next one, I've only ever been able to get there by typing in slash magic design like this. I think it's still in beta, so uh, it's not in as many places as it will be. And then try magic design. So I'm going to click on insert media, and then this is one that I've uploaded. There you go. Now it's given me all these different designs. Some of them are videos, some of them are animated. Some of them are just static and I can give a headline. So I can say, uh, come watch my new Excel tutorial about formulas. And then I can add to results. There you go. Now it's uh, done some things. I don't think it's great. I mean, look at that. I, I think that there are some better things that Canva is capable of doing, but this one's okay. Um, it would be nice as well if it gave you a way to choose which, which size you want. And for the while, it's only one media. You can't add um, another media that will replace it rather than add another thing for it. So here I am in Canva and I've got a vertical kind of Facebook story size thing and I can go to magic resize and I can say that I want this in a square, for example, copy and resize. And it's done a pretty decent job actually of doing some resize that's not going to make my image look out of place. Now turn on system audio and here I have a little video with three different scenes and some music. But it's not really syncing that well. So you can click on your sound click and you can go to beat sync. This is new as well. So sync now. And then it has changed, as you can see, the length of the videos and now works a lot better. So if you add a video, so here I am, for example, I can go to edit video and I have background remover, just like in images. And there you go. So it does remove the background. It usually takes a long time. I already did it before doing this video. I wouldn't say it's amazing. Um, as you can it's see, there's still an outline load. around my head, but honestly, it's uh, okay. And there isn't that much technology that is better than it. There is a limit of 90 seconds. It does take quite a long time to process. So something to keep in mind as well. So here's a list of what you can do with the all licenses or only the pro license. So there's about eight features that you can do with all licenses and nine that you can do only with the pro according to this, but it does change. If you like this video, then check out my other stuff because I've got loads of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Canva, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace that I'm covering on my channel, I love talking about the new stuff like we've covered in this video. Thanks for watching.